Hey y'all, this is Lizzie Scully, co-owner of Four Corners Guides and co-author of the Bike Raft Guide with Steve Fastbinder, aka Doom. We run a multi-sport adventure guide service out of Mancus, Colorado. So we're not going to get all fancy with this podcast. We're just going to record some learn to pack raft and learn to bike raft Q and A's with our guides and other experts in the industry. And we'll throw in some fun adventure storytelling and maybe even some fireside chats that we capture out in the field or at Skullbinder Ranch. It's a catch all podcast. So if you have questions, comments, or suggestions, feel free to make them in the comments or ping us at fourcornersguides.com. We hope you enjoy this casual connection to our world. Our first episode is a beginner's guide to pack rafting, how to get started, a Q&A with Steve Fastbinder. How did you get into pack rafting? I got into pack rafting because I wanted to do a, a bike trip that required some, some crossings of some rivers that was undoable by just swimming with your bike. I needed a, a legitimate tool to, to float across some rivers. So you would say that you got into pack rafting because via bicycles? 100%, yes. And then I'm curious how you're, you developed into the pack rafter that you are today. Like how, what was the process of you turning into like a, just a pack rafter? Uh, well, there were, there were numerous things. Um, a lot of things kind of happened, happenstance. I lived in Durango at the time and... You know, the Animus River goes right through town. I'd looked at the river. I'd tubed it once with a six-pack, but never had any interest in, like, paddling or being a boater of any kind. And that was a turnoff to me as a cyclist. But I, you know, I now owned a boat, a pack raft, you know, an early classic, really stubby boat. And, and the river was always there, and I started dabbling in it. And the more you dabble in something like that, at least for me, the more I was drawn to it. Okay, and so was there any sort of tipping point where you like, really started to dive into more bigger and better pack rafting adventures? Ooh, tipping and diving. Yes, I, <laughs> I tipped a few times. Uh, I dove, I swam a few times in the play park. Honestly, like, I couldn't say there, there was this point where I was like, I'm really into more whitewater, other than I started gluing my own thigh straps into boats. And that gave me more control of my boat. And so probably once I started doing that, that was like 2011, that made a pretty big difference. And, and, and I worked at Alpaca during that time. So, you know, having a decked boat that was available, pretty helpful. And, and honestly, when I got a dry suit, it changed the way that I felt about the river because you could swim in cold water and not just be a liability. You could... You could, you could self-rescue and you could manage yourself on the river when it's cold, which around here in Colorado, it's mostly cold until about like August. Mm-hmm. And then for about a month, it's fine. And then it's cold again. Did your desire to do the Grand Canyon have any impact on your desire to pursue more whitewater boating and more boating skills? Yes, it did in a major way. And I didn't per se have a desire to go do the Grand Canyon It was more organic, like, hey, someone did it in a pack raft. They had a good experience. Now that person is involved in a group that has a permit, and they want to go and do a run of the Grand Canyon with pack rafts, and someone was in a kayak, and I was invited on that trip, and I was at a level where I could join and be invited, and that was a pivotal moment in my uh, pack rafting career for sure. So I'm going to go back to some of the basic questions. If somebody asked you how to get into pack rafting, what would you recommend? Hmm, that's a really interesting question. What is your objective? What, what do you want to do with, with pack rafting? Do you want to become a boater? Do you want to do bike rafting things? Do you want to do hiking trips uh, or fishing off your boat? Like there's so many different ways to use a pack raft, right? Well, what if it's I, infinite. What if I just like <clears throat> read about something online? Oh, well, that looks kind of cool. I probably want to do rivers and a pack raft. You know, what would I need to do to get into it? Well, yeah, depending depending on what your end goal was or just your your, your initial goal, you would want to get the appropriate boat. If you're taking your kids out paddling on flat water with your family, like you might want the forager. Getting the right craft for what, you know, 
is going to get you started. Mm -hmm. Most people, the average person who's like, this pack rafting thing is cool. It seems neat. I want to get into it. Getting a really basic boat, a classic, and just going from there and starting with a classic. A classic um, is, is what? Like for people who don't know. Yeah, a classic is just like alpaca rafts, classic. It is their standby boat. It's the thing they've made for many, many, many years, more than a decade. And it's just a great starter boat. It's versatile. You can add decks or zippers or uh, thigh straps to it uh, accordingly. It's just a great platform to start from. So get a boat. And what else? Get a classic. And what else? Uh, Get a PFD and get a paddle. And if you are in a cold area, you are definitely going to want a dry suit. Helmets are also a plus if you're doing whitewater stuff. If you're doing lakes or class one, no helmets necessary. But, you know, class two and up, definitely a helmet. Okay. Whitewater specific helmet. So that's the basic kit. You tell us what is in your pack rafting kit. I know it's probably a little more advanced than what a beginner would start with, but just what will people aspire to? Well, it's all the same things. So one of the main things, like I've said, like I live in Colorado and uh, when the water is up, it's very cold. So a dry suit with full gaskets. Well, I prefer booties for the feet and then wrist gaskets and neck gasket. You definitely want a relief zipper if you have to pee, whether you're, um, you know, male or female or any of the above, like, uh, or anything in between, you're going to want a relief zipper of some sort. It makes a huge difference. I want to interject here for women. It's really nice to have the, the butt zip. Yeah, the drop seat. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, don't buy the cheap dry suit with no relief zipper of any kind. You will hate it and you will want to cut yourself out of it the first time you get into it <laughs> and find yourself needing to pee which is going to be like several times per day. If it's warm, this, you don't need that. But most river zones require dry suits, at least in the Western United States. I would uh, suggest if you're not sure about getting a boat, there's so many ways to rent a boat for doing trips. Rent a boat. Seek out some sort of guidance, some sort of training. Four Corners Guides offers all of that. If you do some of these guided trips, they often provide a boat. So you don't have to just go out and buy a boat. You may not end up with what you want. But if you go and do some training first or have some guidance, you may decide, oh, okay, well, this boat is right for me. So get some guidance and training first, uh, maybe before you uh, buy a pack raft. And then, you know, paddle often and a helmet often comes with those training courses. Those are the things that you can get after the fact. And what else is in your kit? Well, you want a repair kit. Very, very, very helpful. Typically, when you buy a boat, you get a repair kit with it. You know, it's kind of like part of the deal. A throw rope, but that's a more advanced thing. If you don't know how to use a throw rope or don't know what a throw rope is, you have no business buying one. Seek training first and you know get a throw rope later. For longer trips um, or trips that are group trips, it's really good to have a spare paddle. Mm. But this is all stuff that you don't need to just go out and get these things because you want a pack raft. This is the kind of stuff that you will acquire along your journey. And what else is in your kit? I'm just trying to get an idea of what's in your kit, basically, so that people have an idea of what they'll be working into in the future. Well, PFD as well. And this can be something that's, you know, a more basic PFD. But if you're going to be more advanced, a rescue PFD. But a rescue PFD is only necessary if you have taken swift water training or are planning on taking swift water training. A rescue PFD, it does not help you unless you actually have the training to use it. So yeah, a basic white water PFD is fine. And then a white water helmet also, if you're doing white water things. If you're not wearing a helmet, you shouldn't be on the river. So can you talk about all the other little sundry items that you have in your kit, like whistle and pogies and those kinds of things and the uses of them? Yeah, so depending on like river levels, uh, cold, time of year, uh, pogies are hand warmers that live on your paddle, they Velcro on. If it's really, really cold, spring around here in the uh, Southern Colorado area, pogies are pretty much used any time that you're paddling from January, February, March, April, and often th- all through May. Once June comes, 
pogies are pretty much not used. A whistle on your PFD is also extremely helpful and a river knife on your mounted on your PFD. These are all very standard things that any river runner will have. What not, about, not specific to pack rafting, just river running equipment. What about booties? What are the benefits of booties? Neoprene booties can help protect the Gore-Tex booties on your dry suit. Add a little bit of warmth and insulation to your feet. I use them when it's cold for sure. And are there any other items? Like I know some people use the nose plugs. I've never used them. Yeah, me neither. Anything else in your kit? Sunscreen, major, major helpful mm -hmm. thing, sunscreen. I carry in my PFD in a pocket, typically one sort of snack bar. I carry lube for the zipper. If you have a zipper boat, I'm like a, a T-zip zipper. I carry lube for that in my PFD. And I carry a couple of spare O-rings for the valve cap. And that's alpaca specific. Other people have other things depending on what kind of boat they have. But O-rings and oftentimes a spare cap for my boat is something that I carry my PFD. And I've often loaned those out to people that aren't even in my group or, or anything. Like, your boat looks like it's going flat. And they're like, I don't hear any air coming out. And they've lost their gasket for the cap and just give them a gasket. And it's super easy. So how about clothes? What sorts of clothes do you wear in different environments for pack rafting? Often a wool base layer under my dry suit. And then if it's really cold, I will put like a synthetic layer, like some sort of polypropylene uh, fleece type layer on top and bottom under my dry suit and then dry suit on top of that. Think about like thin wool under layers and then fleece after that and then dry suit. What about the caps? Do you ever wear those warm um, neoprene caps? I rarely wear those neoprene caps. Often they cover your ears, which can be a very nice thing, but you can't hear anything once you put that on, especially if you're me. So that, that's, like, that's like a neoprene cap, I feel like with the ear covers, is like a winter only situation. You would never wear that in like a shoulder season or summertime. How about if you are going on a multi-day backpacking or bikepacking trip, uh, what are some ways that you lighten your load and say you're going with other people well many ways you can lighten your your so your boating kit is what you're getting at right how do you lighten your boating kit yeah yeah so use a boat that is less white water savvy so just an open boat with no deck no thigh straps no zipper no nothing no frills you can get your boat down to like four pounds just by having a boat that's very no frills that's a great way to save weight. But would you do that? You wouldn't do that on a whitewater trip, though. That would be more of a flatwater trip or an easy, slow-moving river trip? Generally, yeah. It depends on your trip. Like, you can get in the weeds here so fast. Well, and where I'm looking for, like, sharing gear, like, what less things can you fear, things can you take, that kind of thing, so. Yeah, well, lighter paddles. If it's not a whitewater trip, you can use a super light paddle something that would not be approved or you know suggested for whitewater. Don't bring your rescue PFD. A rescue PFD weighs like four pounds and a basic whitewater PFD weighs about two pounds. Really big weight savings there. You know, if you're going to have a spare kit, a spare uh, like patch kit, everyone doesn't need to bring one. You can share one with a group. Would you recommend in general that people take Swiftwater Rescue Course? Not until they actually know how to manage their craft. Like, they know how to paddle. So, if you're not comfortable in class two, a swift water safety course probably is not applicable to you. If you don't feel totally comfortable in class two, you shouldn't bother with a swift water rescue course. So how about certification versus non-certification? Well, certification means you're looking to um, work in a whitewater scenario and you're going to need that cert to have your job. Everyone else, you don't need the cert. How do you decide where to go when you're pack rafting? And I guess start with not you, but like if I'm a beginner pack rafter, I've never done this before, or maybe I've done it once or twice, um, and I want to go out and, and do a little bit more, get a little better. Like what, how do you, what do you recommend that people do to figure out where to start? Find someone who is a paddler or a pack rafter. They don't have to be a pack rafter. They could be a paddler, kayaker, um, someone who's uh, versed in, in, 
you know, uh, paddling duckies or even, you know, like a big boat, like, you know, like an oar rig. Find someone who's river savvy. Listen to what they say. And so ask for recommendations from people who are river savvy. So that could be even calling your local shop like Four Corners River Sports and asking them if they have recommendations. Yeah, absolutely. They they may or may not have suggestions, but they probably will. But find someone who's, uh, you know, find someone who has run these rivers that you're thinking about doing locally. Uh, make friends. How do you decide where to go pack rafting as an advanced boater? Well, depends on the season, depends on the winter, depends on the flows, depends on if it's raining a lot. It depends on where you are in the world. There's so many variables to rivers. It depends on what your objective is. It depends on what your group size is, what your group dynamics is, what your group skill level is, and that's how you decide. So how do you decide then, like when you go out with your typical group of friends? Um, Well, where do we want to go first? Does this river, River X? I want to go do River X. Hey, do you want to do River X? Yes, I want to do River X. And someone else is like, no, I don't want to do River X. I've heard about it, and it's way above my skill level, and so they're out. That's a good, that's a good paddle right there. Someone who's like, no, nope, heard about it. That's above my pay grade. I don't want to do that. That's, that's a really good boater. That's a good decision. And someone might be like, oh, yeah, I heard about River X. I did it three years ago. It seemed easy. I'm, it's boring to me. I won't do it. That's also a good choice. They're to, they don't want to be part of your group. Group dynamics, having a bunch of people go on a trip, where you have different skill levels, it also helps that everyone understands like, oh, this might be above or below my pay grade within reason. There's so many, there's so many ways to figure it out. Well, give us That's a, a terrible answer. I'm sorry. It is a terrible answer. But it's a question that people are going are gonna to be curious. Like, how do you decide where to go pack rafting? Well, make sure that whatever you get on is within your skill and safety level. Many times it's a little bit above, but if your group is generally, so if you're going to like go on a river trip and everyone's a solid class four boater and you're a class three boater and they're like, we got your back. We've done this 52 times. Don't worry about it. We've seen you paddle. You can handle it. And there's this one rapid and we'll have you walk that. And they, they clearly know what's going on. Then yeah, you can, you can, you can level up there. But if they're like, hey, we got this permit on this river. None of us have ever done it. We think we're class four boaters, but you're only a class two boater. You'll probably be fine. Don't go do that run. That's a, that's a bad decision. These are kind of extreme examples. No, but that's good. And we yeah. had this discussion with the American Pack Rafting Association at our last safety meeting in that uh, this is a great example, actually, mm-hmm. what you just said, because at the roundup, um, apparently... Uh, people go into the group trips and they often level up, but they don't necessarily communicate where they're at clearly to the other people on the trip. And so they may be leveling up and the people around them may one not know that they're leveling up. The fact that people, they feel safer because there's a bunch of people who have boated that river and so they feel like, okay, I'll probably be fine in this river because I'm with a bunch of good boaters. But there hasn't, there hasn't been, there's no long-term relationship with these people. And then there's not necessarily clear communication. And so these people are leveling up and the possibility of disaster is high because, because they don't know the people and there's not enough communication. Right. So build relationships. And, and that's an example of like a one-time thing. Like I'm going to join this group for one time. Yeah, build relationships. Be honest. Be honest with yourself, first of all, and be honest with the people you go paddling with because the worst thing you can do is say, hey, I'm a class five boater. Let's go do this class five run. And there's a bunch of strangers that are like, yeah, well, we know we've done this and it's no big deal. And and you come and you're like, I can do this. And then you get to the first rapid and clearly like you can't do that. And then the rest of the run becomes this horrible cycle of like a downward spiral. And that's dangerous. Be honest, basically. Like, be honest with yourself. Be honest with the people you're going to go paddle with. And if you're honest with people, they will appreciate it more than you can ever know. Don't hide anything. And if you don't know what your ability is, then... Ask questions. Yeah. Yeah. And, And if you're going into a river with people 
onto a river that's difficult with people who are better than you and you don't really know what you're getting into, that probably is a good indication that you don't actually know what you're doing. You probably shouldn't go. It's a good indication. Yeah. Yeah. It isn't the definitive one, but it's a really good indication. Yes. Like if you don't know how good you are or how, how competent you are. Yeah. Then, yeah. And, and you don't know how good and, and how competent you are. And also like all the information for most rivers that most paddlers will run is readily available. And if you haven't like looked into it ahead of time and done your homework, mm. that's a good indication that you don't know how to do the homework because you aren't a good enough paddler to even know how to look into things that you may or may not be paddling, ah, right? Good point. Yeah. Okay, so next question. When is it safe to pack raft, pack raft by yourself? Or is it? I mean, this is a question that has no correct answer. Well, for you then, how, when is it safe for you to pack raft by yourself? Well, I mean, like, you, could, you can get in the weeds here. Generally, like, if you feel uber confident, like, I'm 99.9% sure that I'm not going to have a swim that will result in me, like, losing a paddle or a boat or being injured. Yeah. Or you're 99%. 99.9% sure that if you do actually come out of your boat for some reason on this run where you're by yourself, that you will be able to self-rescue with all of your gear and continue down the river. If you're like 50-50, like, ah, you know, it could go either way, you better not be doing this by yourself. If you're like 80-20, probably not a really good prospect either 100 percent. you want to be damn sure what have you been your favorite pack rafting trips and why well the very first trip that i did where the boat that i had did everything i needed to do the bike trip that i did the grand canyon the first time i did it was a very favorite just because it was such a huge step up and uh, was a learning experience and was a confidence builder. It's also like great group dynamics. That's just like happenstance in a way, you know, choose you go with or, you know, be chosen in a way. And that was a big part of it. That was with Roman and Brad and Mike? Yeah, and Ganey. Yeah, super good trip. Yeah, really cohesive and amazing. I don't know. I mean, those two trips were pretty telling in a way. Lots of other trips were extremely amazing and what are some things that people should watch out for as they begin pack crafting um well one thing we worked we talked about a lot this year was be very careful about going on trips where people are confident that you will be fine on the trip <laughs> okay meaning they don't know you, you don't know them, they're going to do this run, you're going to join, and they're like, you'll be fine, you've paddled X before, you should be fine. But then the conditions are different than what X was, and they're always higher than that, and dangerous. Be careful of people who are overconfident if you're going to join on a trip, especially, especially if, if they're leading it, the trip. And you don't know them. Correct, yeah. yeah. Be very, very careful about the partners you choose and what their um, proposed skills are. Also, be careful of high water. High water is different than medium water or low water. High water, I mean, if you look at the stats, like the higher the water is, the more dangerous it can be, typically. Not always, typically, though. Why? Uh, well, debris in the river. Typically, higher water means colder water. Typically, features get bigger and scarier. Not always. Not always, but typically they get bigger and scarier, more dangerous, basically. Is there anything I'm not asking you that you want to share with me that, that you, or share with beginners, people getting into the sport? Oh, well, seek, seek guidance, seek, seek friends, be honest, seek guidance, obviously, like seek training. Look, look for people who are doing training that is legit. We offer that, obviously. And if you're not having fun getting into this thing, there's something that's something's missing. Hmm. It could be numerous things. But if you're always scared when you're paddling, it may be that you're just paddling things that are too hard 
it may be that the people that you're going with are pushing you way harder than they should. Mm. This is something that happens all the time. It may be that you don't have the right equipment. This is like kind of like, you know, I'm going from like one to five here. Like the wrong equipment doesn't mean that you're not going to have a, a good time, but it can be a factor. Do you have a dry suit? If it's cold and you're swimming a lot or the fear of swimming and you don't have a dry suit, it's a big deal. Like having a dry suit is a game changer. If you're swimming, it's a major safety component. Those are, those are like my quick ones. Great. Yeah. Well, thanks so much. I appreciate that. That was really good. Thanks so much for joining us. If you enjoyed this podcast, give us a shout out or a review on Apple Podcast or wherever you found us online. We'll have transcriptions for all our podcasts on our blog at www.fourcornersguides.com. Cheers.